So I'll, I'll, I'll directly take help of this situation. <laughs> okay, if we have a dipole P1 and this angle theta. So what we do is like a, we'll get first E parallel, E perpendicular and the resultant E bar. The resultant E bar is what that angle phi. Phi or any, any other angles, if you want, you can tell. Let me take it phi only. You know, I think we know enough of this one. Directly, let me go for the E bar. Now, what is the resultant E? This should be equal to P by four pi epsilon naught R cube. three cos square theta. Then the angle phi is given by tan theta by two. I know the dipole moment P2 is making, but we wanted some sort of like a vector, no? So therefore I think, okay, th this is fine to some extent, but I suggest you like, rather than this, this may not help you. Am I right? Because we wanted the interaction potential. So therefore what I do is like, I, I, though we know this formulas, so okay, just, uh, they may not help us. I'll assume that I'll, I'll, I'll remove this E bar also. Here I'll bring the dipole. I think this will be much very clear. Now we'll calculate <coughs> the dipole present in the field of this. We'll calculate interaction potential and also due to these two, we'll add up, we'll get the required answer. Getting the method, you, you have to take help of here mathematics here. So rather than fighting with any of the concept. Let, let me begin here. The total interaction potential G should be equal to, you should be equal to P2 E parallel cos alpha. Mm. Now I'll, I'll write in vector form first. Uh, this will be P2 bar dot E parallel plus P2 bar dot E perpendicular. M minus of this should be there, no? Yeah. No. P2 E parallel cos alpha. P2 E perpendicular. What is the angle between them? Cos of 90 minus alpha. Anybody? Cos of 90 minus alpha. Sin alpha, okay, good ma, yeah, thank you. Keep it here. So now I think uh, we are in better position. Do we know what is E parallel? E parallel should be equal to two P1 cos theta by four pi epsilon naught R cube, and this is cos alpha. P2 E perpendicular. E perpendicular will be P sin theta sin alpha. This is the total interaction potential. Let, let me simplify the step. So 2 P1 P2 cos theta cos alpha P1 is missing. P1 P2 sin theta sin alpha Okay, agree this. So not only only in some specific position, in any RBT position, let they be oriented, we can work out. So I think we have to be a little bit careful the, the way we are going to deal. So we have to make the problem very simple. Okay, better go for this approach. So I'll, I'll, I know the component of electric field at the location of dipole two due to dipole one. So that is E parallel, E perpendicular. I'll, I'll assume that dipole P2 present in these components. Okay, I agree this, this approach. Uh, can we calculate force of interaction? Differentiating this. We'll get only magnitude, huh? not direction. Am I right? Differentiating this, what happened? We'll get the magnitude of force. Okay. 
or else or else so what happen due to this like a due to this component p2 cos alpha due to this component you will get x component of force due to this component you will get the perpendicular component force take the resultant of that and you will get somewhere in some direction differentiating this will get the force of interaction they may not trouble you because may not be very important none of the books also has just i asked you so let, let me put it here f equal to minus du by dr will be attractive the force of interaction will be attractive because we will get negative f will be negative finally just see once i'll go to the next application